had a, I had a question recently regarding Mark 7 and verse 19. Would you discuss Mark 7 and verse 19? Now, I want to say something about that passage. Uh, number one, I could give a whole sermon surrounding that passage because God has given us in the Bible dietary laws. There are certain animals that he did not create for human consumption. They're here for other reasons, but not, not for us to eat. And he did reveal to that to us in ancient times in Leviticus uh, 11 and Deuteronomy 14. But it's all through the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, you find God's dietary laws. And it's interesting that Adam and Eve sinned by eating something they weren't supposed to eat. <laughs> you know, So that, that it wasn't specifically the dietary laws in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, but it is interesting that that major sin, that major act of rebellion, did involve eating something God told them not to eat. So we do want to be careful that in all ways we honor God and glorify him, including uh, what we consume. And the nature of what he created has not changed. Jesus Christ came and he uh, did all that he did in his human ministry. He suffered, he bled, he died, he was resurrected, but that did not change the nature of the animals that God has created and what ought to be consumed and what not ought to be consumed. So now we're talking about God's law, but now let's talk about human law, rabbinic law, rabbinic tradition, the traditions of Judaism of the Pharisees when Jesus Christ came on the scene in the first century. He was dealing with rabbinic Judaism, and it was soon to become apost apostolic Judaism because the authority was going to shift from the scribes and Pharisees to Jesus Christ and the apostles. We were going to go from biblical Judaism, which has now become rabbinic Judaism, into new covenant Judaism, or into what we would call Christianity. But the Pharisees had established many of their own traditions, and they're not all bad, but they did become in many ways onerous, and often became more the, the, what was emphasized rather than basic morality and basic human relationships. They got often caught up with, the, with these various complex rituals and neglected what we would call, what Jesus called the weightier matters. And one of the Jewish traditions which, which Jesus confronted and in effect said, this isn't necessary. Christianity is not going to maintain this standard. Under the new covenant, we're not gonna maintain this standard. It was not one of God's laws. It was a rabbinic tradition, or, or a series of rabbinic traditions, and it involved ritual washings. I'm holding up now a laver, and this laver would be used in the morning. When I, when I would arise, I would uh, take in my right hand this laver. It would have water in it, of course, put water in it. I would take it up with my right hand, put it in my left hand, wash my right hand, wash my left, wash my right, wash my left, wash my right, wash my left, three times. Then I would raise them, and as I dried my hands, lifting them up, I would make a, a bless. I would say a blessing. I was not supposed to walk more than, f uh, I think it was four cubits uh, before I would make uh, that kind of a blessing. Roughly, uh, I'm thinking that's what, a meter and a half? That's between four to six, uh, that's, uh, uh, six to eight feet, uh, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk more than, what, a couple of yards, I guess. Uh, you know, I would do, I would have to have that, you know, before I walked about two yards, I'd have uh, this container there and, and, and supply of water, so I'd go ahead and do the washing. Is everybody okay until now? But this also became expanded then and was done before uh, any meal that had bread involved with it, it which, m you know, most meals would. Uh, a traditional meal would involve bread. And so before eating the bread and eating the rest of the meal, the, the, you would pick up the container in your right hand, if you, normally if you're right-handed, I think perhaps Left-handed people did it the other way, but pick it up in your left hand, put it in your left, and then once, twice, once, twice, or maybe you know you do it that way twice and that way twice, but two two splashes. Then you'd raise your hand and say a blessing, and then you would partake of the meal. This was also done as a custom before eating food that you would dip in a liquid. Uh, be, the re, I don't remember the reasoning, but be, there was a tradition that bef, uh, of, uh, before you, you, you uh, took uh, some kind of food and dipped it in a liquid, be, if you were going to do that, you would also have a ritual washing. However, in that case, you wouldn't recite a blessing because we weren't sure if you had to do it or you didn't have to do it. And since we weren't sure, we would do it but not, not recite a benediction. It gets very complex, but are you still following? Okay. Well... Let's now go back to the first century. So if, if the if disciples are getting together with Jesus Christ for a meal, which normally would involve bread, that's a staple 
you know, uh, to, to eat bread with your meal. So they're getting together for a meal, and they just eat, and they don't do this ritual washing. Now, your hands are supposed to be clean before you do this. This is a ritual. It's, you know, your hands are supposed to be clean before you ever do this. It's a ritual. And so they didn't wash ritually. And so the Pharisees got onto them for that. You're not washing ritually. And what, what Jesus said, some of your traditions do not need, you know, are not necessary. They're an additional burden, unnecessary. And then he went on and he criticized some of their traditions that were actually undermining the original intent of the law. He came down very hard on them. This is in Mark 15, and in, I'm sorry, Mark 7 and Matthew 15. And notice what the issue is here. The issue here is uh, washing ritually before one eats. That is the issue. And the issue is the rabbinic law. Let's go to what he finally says. He gave them a parable, and when the whole parable was over, he says, I'm going to go to Mark, Matthew 15 and verse uh, 18. Let's go to verse 17, Matthew 15, 17. Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? So any kind of dirt or excess foreign matter that is on food, the body excretes. The body gets rid of it. So the body digests the food and gets rid of the, of the, of the, of the uh, let's say, the waste, all right? So what you take in then, uh, physically, it, it is not a spiritual issue, does not harm you. The spiritual issue is what's going on inside, your mindset, your attitude. Look at what he says in verse 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. So it's what's inside that counts in terms of your mind and your emotions, and, and therefore expressed in your words. So it's not what you take in, but what you spew out, Right? For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. So that's the point of the discussion. To eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. So Christians don't have to worry about it. All right? So he was establishing what we might call halakha, law, conduct for Christians. They did not have to follow these Pharisaic traditions of washings, ritual washings. These rabbinic traditions, they were not necessary. Let's go now to Mark 7. And we have the same passage there. And remember, what he told them, they consider it to be a parable. Let's see what he says in Mark 7, which they couldn't understand and had to have explained to them. Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of the disciples eat bread, see that? Eat bread with defile, that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. You know, the, the, your Greek translation will probably say washing up to the wrist. Or, or some translations say washing in a special way. There's various ways it's translated. For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they washed their hands in a special way. Hold, yeah, well, that's where it comes up here. The unwashed hands is just there. But here it says in a special way. And uh, my margin uh, maybe will say up to the wrist. I'm, uh, yeah, with the fist it says here, with the fist. Well, yeah, with the fist because you're holding a container maybe is why. You know, see what I'm saying? And you tend to wash it out with, you, you wash your hand with your fist held like that. All right, everybody okay? Yeah, okay. For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they washed their hands in a special way, holding the tradition of the elders. It's not in the Bible. It's in the Bible now historically. <laughs> it's in the New Testament as a, his, as a history, not as a command. Uh, and then it goes on to other things, other traditions. And so he criticized the fact that they were following rabbinical traditions more so than the word of God. And there are many religions that do that. They, they, ele they elevate their own teachers and their own tr traditions over the word of God. That's true in many, many religions. It's a common fault in religion. And then he goes on, he shows how they even undermine uh, the traditions at times, or the, or the laws of God by their traditions. He covers that. And then finally, uh, in verse 14, when he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me, everyone, and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from, that, from outside that can defile him, but the things which come out of him, these are the things that defile a man. So as far as dirt or uh, what you take in when you eat, it's not, you know, it, it, it's, it doesn't really bother you in, in, in terms of your character. It's a physical thing. The body takes care of it. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. But what's interesting is that they didn't get the point. Yes, we know that. What about it? You know, we know that if you eat, the body digests the food and gets rid of the waste. But what about it? What's, what's the spiritual point there? And when he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So they didn't understand it. And he said to them, Are you 
Thus, without understanding also, do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him, because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. Right? The, the, the body takes care of it. It cleanses all the foods that you eat uh, in terms of the physical sense. But spiritually speaking, it's what's inside that counts. So these physical rituals are not necessary. And so from here on out, we're not going to deal, we're not going to uh, worry about them. And he said, what comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. So all of those things I just read are certainly things to avoid. And uh, they, sh they should not be things we dwell on mentally. Now, one other, uh, one other way that this was translated, by the way, back in verse 19, uh, thus purifying all foods. So, some people believe the grammar should be, thus he cleansed all food, or thus he declared all foods clean. Well, th all foods are clean from the point of view of ritual defilement. You can eat with, un with unwashed hands any food, and, you're, and it does not defile the food, and you are not defiled by when you eat the food with unwashed hands. That is the entire issue here. So he did declare, if you want to translate it that, that way, he did declare all, all food cleansed, and from the point of view that we no longer have to worry about ritual washings before meals. You know, that, that is a rabbinic tradition that does not uh, continue on into New Testament times. And so that really is the issue in, in Mark 7 and verse 19. It's the issue in Mark 7, the issue in Matthew 15. It is the dietary laws are not the issue there. Ritual washings before eating are the issues there. And they are not a part of, new, of the New Testament way of life in terms of any kind of obligation. So I hope that uh, helps you. And as far as the entire su subject of the dietary laws, I hope to give a talk, a full talk on that at a later time. If you have any questions, you can send them to cck153questions at gmail.com. Also, check out our website and our Facebook page. And you can subscribe to these messages. We hope that you'll continue to learn and to grow from these messages. And please pray for God's inspiration upon these messages. And in the meantime, all the best to you and yours.